Well, hello again, everybody. Thank you for being with us in this episode, which is episode 22 of the uh, great events in uh, the Old Testament. And as I said in the last session, we're getting close to the end of uh, this season of these broadcasts. They've been greatly delayed in, the, in being completed by an illness that I had and then by COVID that struck me in, uh, in January. But we are coming to close to the end of these. And uh, it's been decided that the next season of these podcasts, season three, uh, will consist of the great words of God, the vocabulary of salvation that God has given to us. But today we want to talk about the tenth plague and uh, what, it, uh, what it leads to, uh, to the uh, Passover. Now the Passover is uh, prepared for by God in the twelfth chapter of Exodus. That's the beginning of a feast and of an activity that the principle of which is still going on in Christianity today. But the Passover, as it began in the, and, and, and is recorded in the 12th chapter of Exodus, begins as the 10th of the 10 plagues that break the spirit, the heart of, of Pharaoh and the back of the Egyptian nation by taking out the entire infrastructure and religious uh, organization and the governmental process uh, that was in place uh, in the Pharaoh time in Egypt. So it's a very important time because the Passover uh, is uh, the way God finally puts the, the final touch to the destruction of the, of the um, religious hierarchy that uh, is the Egyptian of the, uh, the religion of the Egyptians, and it is a pagan kind of religion. So the, the Passover is talked about first in the 12th chapter of Exodus. And I want to read a little bit out of that uh, for you. This is, this is the English uh, revised version, even the English standard version. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be for you the beginning of months. See, they're going to go out, out of slavery and into their own uh, nation. So this will be the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month every man shall take a lamb according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for a lamb, then he uh, and his nearest neighbors shall take uh, according to the number of persons, according to what each can eat. You shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, and this is still in place today. Jesus was the Lamb of God without, that, without blemish that took away the sin of the world. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male, a year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs at twilight. Outside of Jerusalem, centuries later, after a darkness that brought twilight, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, was sacrificed. And so they will keep it, at uh, sacrifice their lambs at twilight. Then they shall take some of the blood and put it on two doorposts and on the lintel, the top part of the houses, in which they eat it. They shall eat the flesh that night, roasting on the fire, with unleavened bread and bitter herbs, they shall eat it. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted as it, uh, at its heads with its legs and its inner parts, and you shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. In this manner you shall eat it with your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet, your staff in your hand and you shall eat it in haste that's the way my children always ate their food uh, it is the Lord's Passover for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night and I will strike the firstborn of the land of Egypt both man and beast and on all the gods of Egypt total destruction uh, of their uh, national situation 
and of the gods of Egypt, I will ex execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are, and, I, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be for you a memorial day uh, throughout the, your generations as a statute forever. You shall keep it as a feast. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. And um, on the first day you, you shall remove leaven out of your houses. For if anyone eats what is leavened from the first day until the seventh day, that person shall be cut off from Israel. On the first day you shall hold a holy assembly, and on the seventh day a holy assembly. No work shall be done on those days, but what everyone needs to eat, that alone may be prepared by you. And you shall observe the Feast of Unleavened Bread, for on this day I brought your, your hosts out of the land of Egypt. Therefore you shall observe this day throughout your generations as a statute forever. In the first month from the fourteenth day of the month at evening, you shall eat unleavened bread until the twenty-first day of the month at evening. For seven days no leaven is to be found in your houses. If anyone eats what is leavened, that person will be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he is a sojourner or a native of the land. You shall eat nothing leavened in all your dwelling places. You shall eat unleavened bread. And then verse 21 says that Moses called all the Israels together and said to them, Go do this. In essence, it's a long part there about it. Okay then, so we have the, 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 the prominent moment of relationship between God and the descendants of Abraham. Many, many uh, people strong more than the family of Abraham and Sarah with which this promise began. The Passover lamb, as we read about it, uh, was um, to be a very uh, strictly observed uh, as a uh, pure lamb without, uh, without spot or blemish. And they were to take enough for the family for the days of the week and they were to slaughter it at the evening time. Uh, slaughter it at twilight on the 14th day of the first month. Now we want to notice some things as we move through some of these things now. Uh, the Passover lamb is a type or a prophecy, a typical uh, situation. It's a type of the sheep that Isaiah would later predict would be led to slaughter uh, in Isaiah chapter 53, which was a prophecy of Jesus as the Lamb of God. And later, as recorded by John in the New Testament, John the Baptist would see Jesus one day and the next day, and both times he would say, Behold the Lamb of God which takes away the sin of the world. Christ as the Lamb of God and by his blood uh, is the ultimate Passover sacrifice by his blood, uh, which was a prophecy of Jesus as the Lamb of God. When Jesus died on the cross, it was a, an altar of sacrifice, the cross, and he became the Lamb of God, taking away the sins of the world for all people of all time, of all sins, of all time before eternity. Now that is not to say that everybody will be saved uh, indiscriminately we have to be within the care and keeping as it were of the blood of the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world the blood of Jesus is our Passover Paul says so in one of his letters to the Corinthian church that Christ is our Passover lamb our saving lamb so this could be the providence of God don't you think surely so they were to place the blood on two on the two sides and on the top of the door frame and they, the, the, this way the Hebrews would mark that they belong to God. And the Egyptians don't get this uh, information and they will be destroyed. Eat the meat at night, roasted, not raw, not boiled, not baked. But eat it that night and uh, as, uh, as God passes through Egypt. There are two pace, uh, basic aspects of the Passover. 
And I hope you're listening very close. The pastoral is very, very pivotal in the uh, Exodus. It is primary in the plan of God that, that we have referred to as God's eternal purpose. The first basic fact is God is the personal protector of his people. God is the personal protector of his people, then and now and forever. A, a significant observation statement is in Exodus 12, 23, uh, which uh, uh, we did not read, but uh, 12, 23 makes the statement, um, for the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not allow the destroyer, death, to enter your houses to strike you. God protects his people. Uh, the Lord God himself will block the entry of the destroyer to the houses of the Israelites where the blood is seen. And this will be a protective covering, a shield for God's people and uh, the people of God. Their security and presence and person of God, which is to say that is a forerunner, a type typical of everything that Jesus Christ did in the New Testament as he ended the Old Testament and started the days of salvation. The second basic fact, fact about the uh, Passover, the uh, paramount item in the Passover is the blood of the sacrificial lamb. God revealed a long time ago that the life of the warm-blooded creatures, man and beast, is in the blood of the body of those individuals, and that's in Leviticus 17, 10 through 12, and in Deuteronomy 12, 23. Blood to be exacted from the lamb's body, so the very essence of the lamb's life is taken away, destroyed, sacrificed. Then the blood is smeared on the doorposts. So on the horizontal beam atop the door, fa uh, failure to do this will result in disaster because everybody in that household, the firstborn, will die. It, it is significant that, uh, that Moses, as he relates the command of God on the role of blood, does not speak of the other requirements of, about keeping the Passover. Just the blood, that's the thing that identifies what God did that night. He passed over the house, the re residences of all the Egyptians where they had the blood in those three places. Nothing about the quality of the lamb is stated in those statements of Moses. Uh, when it is to be killed, how the meat is to be prepared, or to be eaten, or what type of clothes the people are to wear, all these things were included in God's instructions to Moses later. But Moses stresses the blood sacrifice of the Lamb. It is the atonement moment involved in the sacrifice of the life of blood, that was the blood, and the offering of the blood as a sacrificial lamb to atone for sin. So the protector, the shield, the guardian of uh, God's people is the Lord God himself who blocks the door to his people to keep death out, of, out and away is concerned to impress them that the sacrifice of blood of a sacrificial lamb, pure and without spot or blemish, is of foremost importance in the ritual of Passover that shall be their basic item of religion for the next 1500 years after the law of Moses uh, is given. And so uh, God is uh, making possible and making preparation uh, for the children of Israel uh, to be rescued from uh, the Egyptian bondage. The New Testament writers uh, are, who are led by the Holy Spirit to deliberately move from the lamb uh, of sacrifice, the animal, and to ultimately insert the sacrificial lamb, the lamb of God, Jesus the Christ. They move from the type to the anti-type. That's a, a way of the theologians seeing prophecy in the Old Testament and the fulfillment in the New Testament. There's a recent book that has been written, written on that and uh, updated for our vocabulary uh, all of the things that are in the type and uh, anti-type 
uh, the typical thing and then the real thing uh, in the plan of God throughout the, throughout the Bible. Uh, the New Testament writers uh, were at pains to be sure that they made that clear because the Holy Spirit put that in the New Testament. In each of the sacrifices of an animal of animals to set God's people free from slavery, in the actual real thing of the antitype, uh, the Lamb of God, Jesus, His Son delivers from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, into the kingdom of God, from despair to eternal life, God's purpose in Jesus Christ. In Egypt, the lamb was not to have any broken bones, and in the ultimate sacrifice for sin, Jesus, God's lamb, did not have any broken bones, bones broken on the uh, cross, the altar cross. In the New Testament, some important scriptures declare that Jesus is the Lamb of God, the one who takes away the sin of the world, and I've mentioned that in John 1. It is also in 1 Peter 1, 19 and 1 Corinthians 5, 7. So then let's uh, talk a minute about the, pro the forecast of, pro of uh, being protected by blood. The salvation uh, by blood for Israelites is we see here in the Passover feast, and it was to be kept throughout the, the generation of the law of Moses. And they did that until Jesus was sacrificed. The 14th day of the first month is to become uh, the day of, uh, of communion with God through the blood of the Lamb. They will become known, that will become known as the day of Passover. Passover has a double sense of meaning. The Lord passed over the houses of the Hebrews and killed them, and that enabled the Hebrews to uh, pass over, uh, excuse me, the Lord passed over the houses of, uh, of the Hebrews and killed the Egyptians, and that this enabled the Hebrews to pass over the Red Sea from slavery into freedom. freedom. We sometimes forget to include that part. The remainder there being saved by blood will be marked in remembrance every year until the concept, concept is finally consummated in the death of Jesus Christ. It will then be shifted and transformed uh, into the Lord's Supper as uh, uh, Matthew records in the 26th chapter of his book. Uh, Passover instructions are given in some great t detail beginning in the 14th verse of the 12th chapter of Exodus, which uh, I did not uh, uh, actually read there and so uh, all of these things are uh, set in place so that when Jesus comes uh, we will see the real thing take place that is still in place here on this time in the year of 2022 when we come back in the next episode next time uh, we will talk about the exodus itself and the crossing of the Red Sea into the Sinai Peninsula. Thank you for being with me today. I hope that you'll read these things and uh, see that God is the power and none other, none other power like him. God bless you.